Missionary Karen Johnson hung up the phone and turned to her husband, Herb, with a worried look on her face. That was my mother, she said. There's been another coup here in the Philippines. A coup is when rebels try and take over the government by force. This is usually a very dangerous time for the local people, but it can be especially dangerous for missionaries. At Karen's little feet, a little poodle named Candy yapped and yipped. Shush, Candy, she said. She wondered if the poodle could sense her fear. Okay, everyone take showers, Karen said. When Karen's daughter Christy asked why, she said, you never know when you'll get another chance. The electricity and water might be cut off. By the time their showers were done, they could hear a loud rumbling down the street. Karen peeked out the window and saw several tanks at the end of the street. They're coming this way. Hurry, cover the windows. Karen and Christy quickly hung towels over the windows to keep the soldiers from seeing them. Karen glanced at Candy, the little poodle, wondered that she might start yapping again. Candy had always been good at warning when strangers were around, but this time it was different. If Candy started barking, the soldiers would know someone was there in the house. Throughout the morning, tanks rolled up and down the street. No one in Karen's family could eat. Their stomachs were in knots. At one point, Herb dared to peek out the window. Across the street, their friend, a Filipino doctor, signaled with his hand. Herb said, he wants us to run to the house. I think we'd better go. They might start dropping bombs. As soon as the tanks reach the end of the street, we'll make a run for it. Ready? Karen nodded. Christy scooped up candy in her arms. Go, Herb said. The three dashed across the street with only the clothes on their backs. Karen felt a little safer in the doctor's house. He even served them hot dogs for dinner. Karen was so hungry. Those hot dogs tasted like steaks. Boom! The first bomb exploded with such force. Christy was thrown across the room. Karen made sure Christy was all right. Even the poodle Candy came up to check. Remarkably, Candy had remained quiet all the time, hadn't barked once. Bombs continued to fall the entire week. Karen could hear the rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat of gunfire all around. Karen's family stayed hidden in the basement of the doctor's home. Just as she was feeling like things would be all right, she heard a banging at the gate outside. The Filipino doctor came running down and ushered them back into the pump room at the far side of the, of the basement. Then he went up to see who was at the gate. Karen and Herb and Christy, along with little Candy, stayed tucked in the pump room. Their hearts were racing. They could hear voices shouting, Give up the Americans! We better pray, Herb said. They all prayed for protection. Soon the doctor returned. They wanted to take your family as hostages, he said, but I gave them my pajero instead. Karen's mouth dropped open. The doctor had given away his sports utility vehicle, his car, to save their lives. Herb shook the doctor's hand. Thank you. Thank you, he said. Finally, it seemed safe for Karen and her family to return home. But as they crossed the street, bullets streaked by them. Some rebels were in their neighbor's house, robbing them and stealing their clothes. When they saw Karen's family, they shot at them. Karen and Herb and Christy made it across safely. They gave thanks to God for protection. The moment they reached their own yard, the little poodle began to bark and bark and bark. She could smell strangers all over the yard. Karen saw that rebels had taken their clothes off the clothesline. But it was Candy's barking that amazed her. You know, Candy never barked once the entire time they were in hiding. That was one miracle among the many, many that happened that week with the Johnson family. The following week, government officials came to their home to check on them. The officials asked Herb what he did, and Herb said he was a missionary pastor. The officials said that the rebels had wanted to destroy their home, but no matter what happened, their bombs would not hit their home. Prayer had made all the difference for these missionaries. Keep praying for the safety of our missionaries all over the world, for their lives are often in danger. And keep giving to BGMC to help provide missionaries with the things they need to reach the world.